following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How are you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 Nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now your hosts, Nico Dehan and Paige Clark. Good morning, and welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. And I'm Nico Dehan. It's a beautiful day in downtown uh, St. Petersburg uh, this morning. It's 56 degrees, uh, going up to a high of 61, low tonight of uh, 46 degrees. So we got that cold front and feels really nice here. Uh, we like it when that happens for sure. We had a long, hot summer, and uh, this is the time of year we really uh, dig it. I know it's uh, happening worse up there, up north, but uh, bear with us, and uh, I think everything will be fine. I'd like to remind you, first of all, pick up our Health Signals newsletter. Issue 22 is out right now, all talking about low cholesterol. Real important to uh, dig deep into this because we have been finding out that when you lower your cholesterol, you get more violent not only to yourselves, but to other people. And uh, when we look at what's happening in our uh, society today with all the killings and murders and suicides and problems with drugs, it's really important to uh, know what's what. And uh, the Health Signals News uh, will give you that. Other important thing, of course, is pick up our Primal ed Edge, our One Shot Wonder. This gives you over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients, all based on fulvic and humic acids, which are nature's miracle molecules because they let the good stuff in and take all the toxins and the bad stuff out. So pick that up. It's $89 a, a month. Uh, you can uh, get that right on our website. So please pick that up. Paige, of course, is still in Thailand, and uh, she'll be coming back, I think, this week. So she'll be back next Tuesday. Looking forward to hearing all the stories and the great things. You know, going to a different country is uh, pretty amazing, but when you go halfway across the world into a different culture, I think that's even cooler. So today I really want to talk about drugs, and uh, I want to start out with uh, the first one here, uh, that being marijuana. And uh, of course, Canada currently uh, finds itself at the intersection of a very historic uh, moment because uh, uh, they have uh, restricted public access uh, to marijuana for many, many years, as we have in the United States. And just recently, on October 17th, Canada became the first major industrial nation to fully legalize cannabis for both medical and recreational use. So that's a big step they took. Uh, second, uh, we find ourselves in the throes of the worsening opiate addiction that has already caused deaths of thousands of Canadians, many, many thousands of Americans, and probably worldwide, I would assume. Uh, the intersections between the opiates and cannabis has been explored at the clinical and pharmaceutical level for, uh, for decades, but the potential for cannabis to modulate the activity uh, act addictive effects of a much harder opiate class drug such as heroin or fentanyl is just beginning to be explored. So because Canada has taken this big step, now there is a lot of companies doing research in how to benefit from this naturally. Also, we're going to be finding a lot of good clinical evidence because now we're finally doing it. You know, CBDs were only... Uh, uh, discovered maybe about a decade ago. So, you know, some of this research is relatively new. Now, the person who gave this story is Chelsea uh, Samania, and I got this from uh, inverse.com. And it's a recent article, and she says, as a neuroscientist, I have been investigating both the role of the brain's cannabinoid systems in a variety of neurophysical processes, including schizophrenia, anxiety, cognition, and memory, and the underlying uh, neurobiological mechanisms responsible for the opioid addiction. For many years, we considered these to be largely separate areas of inquiry. However, 
Recent research finds that specific constitutes in the cannabis may have profound effects, not only modulating the addictive uh, effects of the opioids, but possibly serving as a treatment for opioid dependency and withdrawal. Now, inside marijuana is a very complicated uh, plant, and since the 1960s, the complexity of cannabis has been gradually revealed. Cannabis is now known to contain well over 100 distinct phytochemicals, including, of course, the THC and the CBDs. <clears throat> There's also a host of other cannabinoids, along with a variety of uh, volatile terpene compounds, which give the different strains of cannabis uh, their distinct aromas and flavors. Now, you know that cannabis has two distinct types. One is kind of a one that makes you relax and down and maybe sleepy, and then the other one, uh, the sativa, so that's the indica, and then the sativa is one that r really elevates your mood, uh, makes you want to exercise, makes you want to move, gets you very creative. Both of them seem to have a creative edge to them, but one is more of a down uh, syndrome uh, type of thing, down meaning uh, that you're feeling less energetic, and the other one seems m to be more up. Uh, currently, the pharmacological and the psychotropic effects of both THC and, and CBDs are well understood, it says here. I think CBDs were just tapping into it, though. For example, THC is considered the main psychoactive uh, chemical in marijuana, responsible for intoxicating effects and rewarding and dependence-producing properties. In contrast, the CBDs have been shown to counteract the psychoactive side effects of THC. In the terms of their functional effects on the brain, uh, we have shown in research with rats that adolescent exposure to THC can lead to long-term hyperactive state of the brain's dopamine pathways. These are critical to many psychiatric uh, disorders like schizophrenia and also may be partially responsible for rewarding and the addictive properties of opiates. Other pre-clinical uh, research has shown that adolescent exposure uh, to THC can increase sensitivity to the addictive properties of heroin, heroin in later life. So uh, before adolescent smoking marijuana or using it in every, any form is discouraged because of these properties and maybe we can get some of these properties out of it so we can help younger people. And this, this is what the CBD movement I think is all about. Uh, CBDs has the same as the exact opposite effect on dopamine. For example, we have shown that CBD can block the sensation of the brain's dopamine system in response to drugs like uh, amphetamines. So even in adult brain, we were able to do, demonstrate that whereas THC acu acutely activates dopamine, similar to drugs like morphine and heroin, CBDs uh, decreases the dopamine activity. So the story becomes even more interesting when you consider that the effects of the cannabinoid single signals in the specific brain circuit. So we have two of these brain receptors, and uh, when we uh, get back from the break, we're going to talk about these two receptors, which are called kappa and mu, because THC strongly activates dopamine. Our initial suspicions were that the activating the brain's cannabinoid systems might make opiates even more addictive, but that's not correct. So we'll find out after the break you know, what this actually does and how cool this really is. So during the break, please pick up our Health Signals newsletter. Uh, this is only $10 a month. You get the issues on the first and third Tuesday, so I'll have one out on December 6th, next Tuesday. And please pick up our health, uh, our Primal Edge during the break. It's our one-shot wonder. This is one thing you really need during these tough times when things are just kind of going away. We'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. C call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And welcome back. So we're talking today about drugs, and we really want to understand these certain drugs that are in our society, both in our food. Uh, of course, we're talking about right now marijuana and THC and the CBDs. And all doesn't seem to be the way it's, uh, it is. I mean, the, we generally learn that the THC is the one that gets you high. CBDs are the ones that heal. So we're talking to, uh, of course, the story becomes more interesting when we consider the effects of the cannabinoid signals in specific brain circuits. And these are the kappa and mu receptors that I was speaking about. Because THC strongly activates dopamine, our initial suspicions were that activating the brain's cannabinoid receptors might make opioids like heroin and all those other things even more addictive. However, as with all research, the story is never, the story is never clear cut. For example, example, when we went, to in, went into specific brain areas like the uh, prefrontal cortex or the amygdala, we found that activating the cannabinoid receptor systems actually made opioids extremely adverse, less addictive when we measured in our rodent models. So they did not produce their rewarding effects. More surprisingly, when we used the drugs to bl block the cannabinoid receptors, the reward effects of opioids were strongly increased. This means that cannabinoid receptors in the brain circuits were acting like a gating mechanism, controlling how the brain perceives the rewarding effects of opioids. We were then able to determine that the cannabinoid receptors in the brain circuits were actually controlling the opioid addiction signals to three to two separate uh, receptor mechanisms in the brain. The kappa receptor was responsible for making the opioids adverse, like the less addictive, and the mu receptor enabled cannabinoids to be uh, more addictive. So long story short, uh, drugs like THC, when can activate the brain cannabinoid receptors, uh, receptors might actually reduce the addictive potential of opioid class drugs, especially in certain addictive related brain circuits by regulating how the rewarding and addictive properties are, o of opioids are pos uh, possessed. So in other words, the THC is actually a gateway that 
tells the opioids not to affect your body. So actually the THC, what we thought was going to be enhancing these things, and this is one of the reasons early on uh, many of the legal people always said that this is a gateway drug because if you have THC, it's going to make the opiates worse, and you're going to want them more. And when it, there's research is showing that's not the case. In fact, it's completely the opposite. So CBD has been shown to strongly inhibit the brain's dopamine pathways and may possess anti-addiction potential. There's already promising data research from human clinical studies suggesting that CBDs may indeed serve as a promising treatment for the opioid related addictive behaviors. So they can work in combination. In fact, I read a story uh, a few months back saying that THC actually enhances the CBD qualities. So maybe this is how that's working. Clearly there's two different major uh, constituents in the cannabis, the THC and the CBDs, and they can produce dramatically different effects within the brain, particularly in the brain circuits linked to the opioid addiction. Nevertheless, important questions remain to be answered naturally. We need to improve our understanding of precisely how the THC and CBDs are producing these effects. More importantly, there's an urgent need for uh, early phase clinical trials to explore if and how THC, CBD, or perhaps a combination of both might serve to mitigate both the rewarding dependence producing effects of opioids. So both of these things can be accomplished and whether they uh, could reverse the addiction related uh, adaptions that occur in the brain during the vicious cycle of opiate addiction dependency and withdrawal and the relapse. So what we thought about marijuana is uh, quite a bit different and uh, this article really goes in pretty deep. And I like uh, the fact that uh, they really explain that uh, of course, it's the research that we're just now diving into. You know, for so many years, it's just been kind of sloughed aside. We don't need to do any research on marijuana because we know what it's all about. We've had it around for years. We did, but we never used it in these ways. We used to use it as clothing, as rope, uh, as paper, and these are really good products uh, that the hemp plant has produced for us, and we need to get back to those things because uh, the hemp plant itself is a great, uh, it's a strain of marijuana, even though it doesn't have a lot of THC in it, but it's great for making rope and clothes and paper without the use of chemicals like we use when we uh, use it from wood pulp. With wood pulp, we have to not only destroy all the living trees, but we have to... Uh, just do a lot of chemical reactions to get what we wanted. So much better idea to use uh, the marijuana plant. And it grows like a weed. That's, I guess, why we called it a weed. So let me switch subjects here. Let me see, go here. And I've got another inter interesting article here that uh, I ran across. The effect of the other types of drugs in our society. Now. One of the things that uh, at living a primal lifestyle is what we talk about is the food, the quality of the food and what's in the food. And the effects of antibiotic use in animals uh, uh, has a real bad effect on human health. And uh, it also causes a lot of problems with drug resistance. So it's a global health crisis. So we're going to look at this. And we have a nice little picture of pigs here in their normal hangout. This is, of course, not a uh, farm that I would say is uh, friendly to the pigs. They're all jammed in here. And this is the crowded type of situation that leads to the use of antibiotics. When you crowd animals and people together into large groups and jam them together, where you're going to have health problems. We have this in cities, and we certainly have this in farms with the animals. Animal uh, <clears throat> antibiotic resistant poses a, a serious threat to public health, both in the United States and, of course, everywhere else, too. According to the Centers of Seeds, uh, Disease Control and Prevention, antibiotic resistance is responsible for 25,000 annual deaths in the European Union, 23,000 deaths in the U.S., and as many two, as mi two million U.S. individuals develop a drug resistance infection every year. By 2050, some researchers predict that the uh, resistance, antibiotic resistance, will cause 10 million deaths every year, surpassing cancer as the leading cause of mortality worldwide. So this is not a good thing, and uh, well, cancer is not good, but if you, we have this on top of it, it's going to make all the other things worse. 
your chance of getting cancer is going to be higher. Your chance of getting your uh, flu is probably going to be higher. These are not drugs that we want in our food system. And remember, when it's in our food system, we're going to be eating it ourselves. When we spray, spray our plants with pesticides, we're eating pesticides. And when we inject our animals with antibiotics because we're feeding them the wrong thing, then, and because of the crowding conditions, then we're going to have a lot of problems. And we need to feed drugs to these, kind of like they feed us, isn't it? You know, when we're crowding into cities, I think probably statistically, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but statistically I would say that people in a city get sicker a lot more than if you're out in the country and you've got a lot of spaces between people. It just makes more sense to me. And when we, we increase the crowds, we increase the chance of infection and getting infections from other people. It just uh, makes a lot of sense. Okay, folks, we're up on a break. So uh, during the break, please pick up the Health Signals newsletter. Remember that in our Health Signals letter, we do have some coupons here at the end. Let me get to them here. We have the CBDs coupons right there. Uh, and these are really valuable, so pick that up. And also, please pick up the Primal Edge. I'll be right back. We'd like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today the taz profile scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence as you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And welcome back to the show and uh, talking about antibiotics and uh, animals here. And this comes from a uh, talk that was given in uh, the UK Parliament uh, by Nicola Evans. Who's a do she's a uh, doctoral researcher in the structural biology at King's College in London. 
And she says on a global, global scale, the U.S. and China are the largest user of antibiotics for food production. According to the Food and Drug Administration, 80% of the total antibiotic use in the U U.S. is in agriculture with pigs and poultry receiving five to ten times more antibiotics than cows and sheep. And why are they using this on the cows and sheep? Because uh, I think the cows, uh, the cows uh, excuse me, the uh, pigs and the chickens are really jammed in there a lot closer together. I think uh, if you put cows too close together, they're going to have a lot more problems. They're kind of big animals, a lot of weight. Uh, farming animals is a uh, particularly intense process with pigs, sows, for instance, not uh, being given enough time to recover in between births. So there, he, she's actually blaming the, uh, the demand of the food because we're demanding so much meat that, uh, you know, this is what's driving this. Uh, pigs and chickens live in very confined, crowded spaces, which increases their stress and risk of disease uh, transmission. Additionally, antibiotics are often or are sometimes used to make the animals grow faster. So they're giving them growth hormones also in humans. Studies have shown that antibiotics raise the risk of weight gain and obesity, and they wipe out the be beneficial gut bacteria that ha help you regulate weight. Remember that antibiotics kill all the germs, so that's why Primal Edge is uh, in the, you know uh, one of the things that we promote, Primal Edge, because it has all these things in it that we're missing, and it also uh, helps you detox some of those things. Uh, in animals, the, uh, the phenomenal has been uh, seen as a positive, with several countries still using antibiotics as growth promoters. So not only are they using it, but they're seeing it as a beneficial thing, because of course you can charge more, because most animals are sold by the pound. Until a year ago, U.S. farmers used antibiotics as growth promoters too, but the practice has been largely banned. China and the U U EU have also outlawed this practice, but many other countries continue to use antibiotics to promote growth in animals. Finally, the um, preventative use of antibiotics also adds to the problem. Many farms give chicks antibiotics as soon as they are born, regardless of whether they're ill or not. So a lot of times they're just feeding this as a standard meal. They put it maybe in their feed. The weaning practice that take place in farms influences the uh, animal's microbiome and uh, creates a false need for antibiotics. Uh, we have a picture here of chickens. And this is a typical chicken coop, let's say. Uh, when they're jangling all together, you have one rooster sitting here. <laughs> These are all the chicks. I guess he's in heaven, but maybe not because they're all sick. Uh, for example, piglets would naturally wean when you get about three or four months old. However, piglets are weaned uh, in the U.S. at 17 to 28 days old. Uh, not having access to natural antibiotics present in their mother's milk impacts the animal's immune system. Abrupt weaning has also found to raise the gastro uh, diseases in calves and lambs. In turn, these diseases call for the use of the antibiotics. So it's the farming methods, it's the husbandry methods that we're using that actually cause us to have the need to use the antibiotics. If we didn't crowd them, if we didn't feed them what we're feeding them, we wouldn't use that. And of course, here on Living a Primal Lifestyle, we want our uh, meat not to be only be organic, f completely free of any kind of drugs whatsoever. Uh, we also want them to roam and have exercise and get the sunlight. This is the natural process. It's a, it's a mixed up world. It's even, you know, we talk about the forest fires over in um, uh, California. Thank goodness they're out now. But these are also natural processes. You know, when we lived in the wild, we used to clean up the wild because this is the stuff we used for our fires. It just makes sense that if you leave it alone, and I guess Trump is right, and you got to do a little raking, but it's, you know, it's because we're not there anymore. We're now, uh, if it's a park, fine, but if it's a wild area, we're not even allowed to live in wild areas anymore. These are areas that are kind of restricted for for us, so it's not good. We need more wild areas because this is where the herbs come from, this is where the, all the healthy plants are, and this is where the healthy animals remain. They're not on these farms, that's for sure. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, research has shown uh, abrupt weed, uh, weeding. I, I guess I went over that already. So furthermore, uh, ge uh, genomic studies cited by Evans have found a dramatic increase in uh, the E. coli in pigs' small intestines uh, after receiving the antibiotics. E. coli is responsible for half of the piglets' death worldwide. An animal's environment also plays a clinical role in developing a diverse and healthy microbiome. Past studies, for example, found that a pig's microbiome can be influenced by something as simple as the presence of straw. Wow. Having straw in an environment led to a completely different ratio of bacteria in pigs, and the straw has been associated with a lower risk of developing por porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome. Now these chicks, I've got another picture of chicks here. Of course, they're removed right away. The main reason for, uh, let's see, uh, poultry microbiome is even more affected by intense farming practices than that of a pig. The main reason for this is that the birds, for the, in the birds, the early gut colonization occurs during the development of the egg in the mother's uh, oviduct. The chicks absorb microorganisms from the mother at that stage, as well as through the pores of the eggs during brooding. Now, once the chicks have hatched, they continue to enrich their microdome by exposed to feces. However, in modern farming systems, the eggs are taken away from the mother and cleaned on the surface, which re removes all the beneficial bacteria. Also, when the eggs hatch, the chicks do not get access to an outdoor space when they have access to uh, the feces and the other sources of beneficial bacteria, and they don't interact with adult chickens at all. Uh, finally, the crowded conditions that chicken also live in can cause heat stress. This, in turn, is a fertile ground for the development of E. coli salmonella infections. And yet another example of how the environment can affect the bird's microbiome. Microbiome, excuse me. So what does this uh, use of antibiotics mean for the human health? The most important thing to consider, she says, is that any single time antibiotics are used, whether in animals or in humans, you risk selecting you risk selecting for drug-resistant bacteria. We need to safeguard antibiotics uh, for use in both animals and humans to ensure that it can be used for treatment for infection in the future. So if you're using it all the time, they're not going to be very effective later on. And uh, we find this happening. Of course, there are always new strains of bacteria. Uh, that are coming up that are going to be resistance to what we're using. So the less you use, and uh, I am very, very hesitant to use any kind of an antibiotic when I get the flu, I get the cold, or anything like that. I want to wait until I absolutely need it and it saves my life. And then perhaps I'm going to try some natural treatments first because I found in the past that they, these things have been successful. But there have been occasions where they haven't been successful, and I want to have confidence in myself that I'm not going to have a resistance problem. And uh, I think eating organic and making sure that your food doesn't have any of that in it and using the antibiotics less for yourself is going to be much, much better for you, and you're going to not have that problem in the future. The number here is 877-927-6648. Give me a call if you like. Uh, i got another section left. Uh, coming up, maybe a couple here, so uh, I'll be around. In the meantime, please pick up the Primal Edge, my one shot one. I'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you, something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv for the latest market information and welcome back uh, we have a caller uh, tom from uh, tampa's on the line hey tom how you doing today hey great nico how about you i'm doing fine let's go yeah we got a little bit of a cool spill coming through here huh love Feels it good. love it yeah yeah let's Hey, uh, Nico, uh, yep. nicotonic acid, nice, and I noticed it uh, in the newsletter there. I was peeling through it there a couple of days ago. Um, it basically, now I have heard it's a kind of a, um, I think, getting rid of some of the bad, bad cholesterol. Is that what uh, we're talking about there? Um, yeah, that's uh, uh, that article was explaining that it does, uh, I don't know if this is available as a vitamin at all, but it's in certain things, and, uh, yeah, it does help. Uh, dissolve some of the uh, what they call the small uh, particles of the uh, uh, what they call the bad cholesterol the LDLs. Okay yeah I, I take it I don't know I usually take about a thousand milligrams a day oh, yeah, I take 500 take in the morning. Okay. Yeah, you I take, take 500 in the evening. The thing is you get a flush that's the only thing about it. I mean man you like can niacin. turn right as a tomato which hey, that, it is what it is is where yeah. I look at it. It's but, like niacin in that uh, sense. Yeah. Okay well great. Uh, hey, one other thing. Uh, yep. I work out on a heavy bag from time to time, you know, a little self-defense training. Sure. Uh, are, are you hearing anything about that uh, being uh, bad for the knuckles, arthritic-wise down the road? Well, yeah. Uh, I, you know, when you impact your joints, it's kind of like running uh, on a hard surface. Right. You know, the same thing. It can be, the, you know, this is why uh, boxers uh, tape their hands and they wear gloves mm -hmm. to protect the hands. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, you can definitely do that. So I'd recommend you know not maybe not hitting it so hard, going for accuracy, and build up and do do a few hard ones. But the, the main thing is to get your body moving into a certain rhythm, so you it'll be effective when you're fighting. That's that's right. The hey, by of the it. way, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went out and watched uh, Creed two the other day. Great movie. Which one? Oh, Creed, Creed two. two. Yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't yeah. seen it. That's a good one. Yeah, Creed two. A good movie, man. It's, it's, I'll it's check about it out. And stuff. But... Hey, thanks yeah, a lot right, for calling, man. man. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. So uh, I got an article here I wanted to go over. Let me see if I can find it. Why we don't have enough uh, organic farms, and uh, basically, it's a pretty good article. Uh, you know. Having an organic farm now is the unusual part. Uh, if we go back a couple of hundred years when we weren't using fertilizers and we weren't using uh, the pesticides and we weren't using the GMO sprays and all these things, 
things where the natural farm was the organic farm and everything else would be like an offshoot of that if you were if the pesticides started coming in and you were using those you were the unusual ones and the organic farmer really wouldn't have to worry his soil was pristine because he's been using it for generations probably things have changed now the organic farmer is the one that is kind of the unusual guy out there, even though we have a pretty good uh, take on, we have a lot of organic farms here in the United States, a lot of them in New Zealand and Australia, a lot of them in the, in the European Union too. So they're becoming more and more popular, but they're unusual, which means that you have to work a heck of a lot harder. And that's what this article is really talking about. Uh, nice picture in here showing you how they have to actually take these plants and wrap them into uh, you know, something that isolates them from the environment. Uh, because now they're going to use water that doesn't have pesticides in it. You're, the soil has to be pristine. So maybe they're, in some instances, they're probably growing things indoors a lot of cases. And I think with the Grand Solar Minimum coming maybe this year, next year, maybe in 10 years, maybe in 30 years, we're going to see people bringing these things indoors. In fact, I found an article the other day that talked about uh, Russia is starting to grow a lot of their grains indoors now. Of course, Russia being in the very, very north and into that real snow zone, I can see why that would happen. Here we see a farm, and this is called the Lady Moon Farms in Porta Gorda. Uh, the kale is being planted in raised beds that are organically fertilized and covered in plastic to retain moisture and prevent weed growth. Lady Moon Farms originated in 1988 with five acres in Pennsylvania and has grown to 2,600 acres on nine farms, expanding to Florida, Georgia for an extended growing season. It rotates crops among mash, leafy greens, cucumbers, watermelons, uh, peppers, tomatoes, and eggplant. Here we see another thing here. These are workers at the Lady Moon Farms in Podogorda expecting yellow squash. Discard about two-thirds of the day's harvest due to small nicks from handling. Consumers may reject vegetables with such imperfections. Most is donated to a food bank. The remainder is uh, composted and used as livestock feed. They're making uh, the grade w uh, those making the grade will be sold at the East Coast retailers. So the good stuff they uh, feed the humans, the bad stuff to livestock feed. So <laughs> the poor animals get shafted each time. Uh, the, or, say, uh, the soil or organisms, uh, they're like a billion in a teaspoon, uh, this lady says, or he says. Uh, whose childhood depends, uh, he, his childhood depended on the soil. It's a sign that one of his experiments is paying off. He says, Bailey, he's 38 years old, lives on a farm where he grew up, but he's added a twist to the family tradition. In place of what he calls the farm rigid and chemical-based practices, he's transitioning his 5,000 acres to organic farming methods. It hasn't been very easy switch. He's navigated challenges through trial and error because despite the growth of organic ar agriculture, there isn't a mentor or a playbook to follow. On a conventional farm, I can hire sprayers to come out and spray the whole farm within a day and then come back and spread out the nutrients, the, f the fertilizer. I can't do that with organic. So let's define organic. Uh, organic uh, foods feature the USDA organic seal are grown and processed following a set of regulations which include using only approved pesticides control methods such as eggshells or crop rotation to act as natural deterrents. Synthetic fertilizers, genetically modified organisms, antibiotics, synthetic growth hormones, and artificial preservative flavors or colors are not allowed. Certi uh, certified farms are regularly inspected for compliance by the U.S. Uh, states, uh, United States of Department of Agriculture. It's not a matter of simply turning off the chemical sprayers. Farmers must learn to manage the soil nutrients without fertilizers and tackle weeds and insects without herbicides and uh, insecticides. It's a steep learning curve. Imagine, we used to know this, and now we have to relearn the whole system because we've been taught over and over again for the last hundred years that what we were doing is uh, going to be much easier if we just do it this way, using the chemicals and things. And now we see what's happened to the health of the animals, the health of our society. And in the new term, he's formed a partnership that offers a measure of insurance against some of the risks. Last year, he sold 1,300 acres of wheat and oaks to Annie's, a producer of organic pasta. 
pasta and snacks, now part of the uh, uh, General Mills system, which uh, committed to buying more. The company marked the occasion with a limited edition box of bunny-shaped graham crackers that featured the Bailey's photos. Another picture. Somewhere. Here we go. So this is more, I think. This is the Alexander Farm in Crescent City, California. It produces milk from grazing cows, eggs from pasture-based hens, and chicks are raised in a common communal coop outfitted with feeders, which is on the left, and the purchase, which is on the right. So you can see this is a little bit better method. It's still uh, confining them a little bit, but it looks a lot better. And if they're let outside, that's uh, much, much better. So we'll talk about this a little bit more when we come back, uh, talk about the eggs and things like that. Stick around, folks. Got a little bit more. I'd like to remind you, please pick up our caramel edge, and I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the Bull Bear Nadex Options Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back. Here on the Telestrator, you can see that uh, this is Savannah Alexandri, and she's tending to the chickens here. Much better way of doing it than coop, being cooped up. This is some more of the facilities. These are boxes uh, that are used for the calves while they inspect them when they're newly born. They keep them there for a week or so, and then they put them out to pasture. Uh, here's uh, distributing eggs. Uh, this last picture here is really cool because this is uh, what it's all about as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they have 1,500 cows. They're milked twice daily and spend roughly 18 hours a day at pasture with less time during the winter. In addition to grazing on pasture, the cows are felt a, fed a supplement of corn, uh, silage, and uh, alfalfa 
kind of a, dry, a dried form. The uh, farm produces an A2A2 variety of milk, which can be consumed by those lactose intolerant. Remember, Paige is always talking about uh, here in the United States, mostly have, we have the A1 cows, and they produce milk that is uh, really a problem to a lot of people because uh, if, there, if, if you can't do the casein very well, the A1 is not a good product for that. A2 cows, different variety of cow, much better, and, uh, and it, just about anybody can drink that. So, so it's really, you know, ch making choices, whether it's marijuana use or uh, opioid use or whether you want uh, your food to have antibiotics or non-antibiotics. These are choices that you make. It's going to be much more expensive when you talk about food, but I think uh, what my wife and I have discovered years ago when we started on this uh, primal type of thing, eating uh, much more animal protein, even though it's not a huge quantity, but we eat less vegetables than most people do. And we certainly don't eat any of the grains or the starches. We pretty much kept that out of our uh, lives. Uh, so when you do that, we found that the expense goes down, though even you're paying maybe 20% more for better meat and better vegetables. You're consuming less because the diet itself is kind of self-restricted because you're so satisfied satisfaction is what stops you from overeating and satisfaction is only ruled by fat it's never ruled by sugar because the more sugar you eat the more you cr uh, crave it kind of like the heroin uh, and the opiate type of addiction so that's our show today and uh, I'll be back next week with Paige I believe she's I think heading back so that'll be really cool and thanks for sticking around with me for this month and uh, really appreciate it and uh, you guys have a good day bye bye No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.